This is a series on Let's Rock Festival. Let's Rock is an annual family-friendly 80s music festival held all over the UK. Locations include Belfast, Essex, Southampton, Leeds, Norwich, Kent and even more. You're guaranteed to find a location near you. In this episode, we talk to Go West, a pop duo famous for songs such as We Close Our Eyes and King of Wishful Thinking. Cool. Hello, let me just test the volume. If you say hello briefly. Yep, I got up this morning and had porridge for my breakfast. How's that? That's what we need, yeah. Hi, so um, I'm Chloe from Right Mag and I'm here with half of Go West. Ah, the better half, of <laughs> the course. The better half yeah, of yeah, Go West, yeah. sure, that's very fair. <laughs> um, so I was researching recently. Yes. I was like, I know a bit about Go West I already. think you would have had to have done, yes. No, I said, like, I know I knew Go West and I knew, like, your songs and I had, like, a little research and I was watching music videos and um, specifically for Close Our Eyes and also King of Wishful Thinking, I was like, what is going on here in these videos? Yeah. Um, firstly, is there a way you can kind of explain process into deciding for example close your eyes like is very like the blue background there's like wooden dolls there's you're holding like a wrench yeah what's what's happening why have you yes well i can i can give you a rundown of what happened i can't explain the thinking behind it because i don't think that godly and cream they don't operate like that at the time they were very successful so successful mm-hmm. in fact that where the normal course of events would be a video director would present the record company with a storyboard saying, here's what we're going to do, this is what's going to happen here. None of that with Godly and Cream, because by the time we were in a position where they had said yes to our record company to direct our video, that's all the record company wanted to know, that they had surefire, proven track record directors. So um, on the day of the video, I showed up in my street clothes, which I I can't explain to you why I was wearing a vest in the street in those days, but nevertheless, that's what I was doing. And that's what um, Godly and Cream had after much parading about in outfits. That's what they decided they wanted to go with, but without any explanation as to why that would be. And the wrench was presented to me on the morning of the video shoot. So there was no, at least there was no forward planning from my point of view. No one told me that was going to be happening. Mm. Although, in hindsight, I can see that it was a, a, a sensible idea because Godly and Cream were sharp enough to know that Richard and I had no experience in front of a camera, none whatsoever. So they didn't know what was going to happen, whether we were going to have any kind of performance uh, ability or how that was going to go. And in fact, the first shot, or I suppose it's the main shot of me in the video, I'm standing five feet from the camera with Godley and Cream on either side, out of shot, just shouting instructions at me while I'm lip syncing the song, telling me what to do with the wrench, where to put it, put it over your head, all the rest of it. So, so cool. they cool. gave, well, <laughs> I'm glad you think so. <laughs> I don't think it was universally approved of, but the thing is, uh, the wrench was actually very heavy and I'm not particularly a weightlifting kind of a guy but of course moving around with that wrench which weighed more than you might imagine it it, it pumped up my stringy little muscles a little bit and made me look more muscular Um, and in terms of uh, the blue background and the numbers and the the, the wooden uh, artist mannequins Mm. I think, because we said to Godly and Cream, can we come to the video edit? And they said, no, you can't. Oh. So, yeah, so that, I'm reading about Billie Eilish having total creative control over the visual aspect, the musical aspect, and as much as I would love to tell you that that's how it was back in the day, that wasn't my experience. So Godly and Cream said, no, you can't come to the edit. And uh, I gather that while they were watching, because I think that the... The blue background is obviously some kind of uh, forerunner to green screen in this day and age. Mm. Um, But the numbers, I think, were a technical side effect of whatever they were doing. And I think they just decided to go with it, really. I mean, in some way it kind of makes sense, but also I remember watching it and being like, what is going on here? This is, I mean, I guess it leaves the people watching it to like make something out of it I guess yeah I'm not sure that there's any real storyline there or anything to be I think that the, the, the prime requirement of that video was to attract the viewers attention yeah. and at that time MTV in America was more or less in its infancy and 
it's simply that the video looked so different than mm. anything else that it got a lot of MTV play. And that was, even though the single unfortunately wasn't a top 40 single in America, mm. it did introduce that TV audience to us as a band, as a new artist and what we were doing. Yeah, so on that note, you did mention Billie Eilish, but um, how important then do you think music videos are to help to help like boost the band's like image and like popularity I guess well I, I would say that it's crucial and obviously Billie Eilish for example has a really definite view of herself and what she wants to say and again I can't make that claim I, mm. I knew that we would be making pop videos but we presented Godly and Cream with our storyboard for our idea and they just said yeah that's great right, so and chucked no it in the bin um, uh -huh. which is which is you know listen as i say the, the video did the job that it was required to do which uh, uh introduced us to the audience and got us some attention um, and that's really all you can ask i would say about that video though that uh, we um we made our first album in, in its entirety for less money mm. than the video for We Close Our Eyes cost to oh, make. Wow. So the, the album was cheaper than one pop promo. But, you know, um, it was there to do a job and it got the job done. No, definitely. I feel like, especially now, I know music videos still like cost a lot of money, but you can do something so effective with a lot less money. Yeah, of course, technology is very different also. And I, and I would suggest that I don't know what a huge artist's video budget would be, mm. but in the 80s, as we all know, there was a lot of money and mm. the people were very extravagant. And the cost of our, uh, we close our eyes in the video, we did immediately after that for a song called Call Me. Mm. Oh. Those kinds of budgets are not around today. Mm. It's like you say, there's partly the technology makes it easier to do amazing things for less money, but I think people are investing less money in that aspect now. Yeah. I see it because, like, I guess music videos are only really a thing, like, you know, when MTV came around. Of course, you know that. Yeah. But um, so what, where do you think it, we're going to go next with our, like, artists? And what brand new thing could possibly go forward to, like, present an artist and make them seem even more, um, like, influential and, like, within the media, I guess? Like, where, where do you think we can go from now? Because music videos are so huge and so much money was put into it, you yeah. know? Uh, yeah, I don't see... Of course, I'm not in a world of making pop videos anymore, so yeah. I don't know what kind of impact um, a new promo... I presume it goes to YouTube immediately mm. and other platforms, but I don't know what, what effect that has on an audience that expects to get its music for free. Uh, whereas in the day, of course, you would have had to have paid for your CD or your album or whatever it was. Now... To all intents and purposes, once you've paid your platform monthly subscription, the music is effectively more or less free. So mm -hmm. I don't... Um, of course, I'm talking to you about Billie Eilish because I think that album is fantastic. I think she's a really interesting artist. And so in a very long and roundabout way of answering your question, <laughs> what makes Billie Eilish's visual content stand out mm. is her super powerful very definite vision of how she wants to sell herself if you like how she wants to appear to the public so I suppose the way forward is to have people who have that kind of um, sense of who they want to be visually um, I also saw I'm sure you have too the YouTube um, interview with Matt Healy is it from Matt the 1975, Healy, 1975. Yeah. Yeah, that's talking again about how definite he was and what a vision he had mm. for the various videos that they've made and that all the ideas were coming from him and I think it's fair to say that that wasn't the case in any video I ever made I was it's always well I'm not so sure about that because oh. some of the videos did the right did the job as I keep saying Definitely, and yeah. I'm not I, I didn't have that kind of art college background mm. or really I think it's interesting that you refer to image in video because I would suggest that speaking just for ourselves and it's a long time ago now we never really had a, an identifiable image mm. um, which went which definitely went against us mm. because I think even in this day and age if you say the name of the band many many people would say I've never heard of them I don't know who they are if you say 
have you heard the King of Wishful Thinking, which was on the soundtrack of Pretty Woman? They go, oh yeah, I know that yeah, song. Yeah, that's the one, yeah. So they know the song, but mm. they don't associate it with any kind of a recognisable image that we had. And, and, you know, with hindsight, although I didn't really enjoy the fashion of never having worn makeup ever in my life. Right. And then showing up, not to the first pop promo but to the first few photo shoots we did for magazines like smash hits and there would be a makeup artist who would apply makeup mm. in the style of the day yeah. so i'm suddenly wearing mascara and blush <laughs> and, and 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 the makeup artist is saying to me are you okay with that do you look do you think you look good and i'm like i don't know do i look good i think i look ridiculous you know but yeah. so as i say we didn't we weren't a part of the new romantic movement. Yeah. There was no identifiable image that we had. And it is surprising, now I'm talking to you about that, that 35 years later, as if there was any chance in hell of it happening, people say, have you got the vest? Are you going to wear a vest? I'm like, You've got to be kidding. <laughs> the you vest, know. the yeah. magical vest. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you know, so, but it does point to the power of a certain image being associated with an artist. Definitely. I haven't worn a vest since that video shoot but everyone must be so sad people about still it. <laughs> asking you know anyway you know no that's so fair when you were mentioning the 1975 it's like when i think of the 1975 for a while they had an album that was based around the color pink mm -hmm. and like the neon lights and like yeah. i think mostly i think because of how easy it is to now record and release music yourself i think it was it was different but it was also maybe easier 20 30 years ago to make it i suppose in the way in the way of like just doing what you want to do and feeling your music and doing your music well rather than having to do like now all the extra things like having to look perfect having to like do all these things um yeah just yeah i mean I, I i i'm fully aware that i have never looked perfect but i did <laughs> nevertheless feel that pressure once i realized mm. that i had a certain degree of profile that we had promoted whatever single it was on the tv and people were seeing you in their living rooms being aware of that made me feel very much that I didn't look like a pop star, whatever the hell that is. Exactly. You know, yeah. but but I, I definitely, I wasn't thinking so much about necessarily looking perfect because mm. that was never going to happen. But but I did suddenly feel, oh, I'm I'm riding the bus, which I used to do all the time before mm. I had a driving license, and no one would pay any attention to me, obviously. But once you've been in people's living rooms, you notice that people around you are, oh, yeah. you know, looking over their shoulder. And that, in me, in me, at least in me, provoked a feeling of, oh, I, I wish I looked different, better, whatever. Yeah, you know, yeah. that's a, not But a you're right, the, the, the landscape, the, the context is utterly and completely different mm. now. You know, the internet, blah, 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 you oh, know. Yeah, or, all it's just, it is all so different. Yes. And, uh, yeah, uh, whereas, and I, I, I've learned to my bitter cost over 35 years that saying anything along the lines of all we cared about was the music is not an interesting thing to say in an interview and people just, they, their eyes glaze over. <laughs> because as you rightly say, there's so much more to it. Yeah. And when I look at Billie Eilish or the 1975 and you look at, it's so much more of a complete artistic vision which I, I freely admit I never had. I just was a singer singing some songs. But often I think back around, like, I guess, even from, like, the 70s to the mid-90s, like, wearing what you want to wear and, like, feeling comfortable, like, or not, not even comfortable, just, like, wearing it, I guess would, like, create a fashion trend with it. So, like, even in a white vest, like, it's a statement still, and it's still a good look, even though it's not... It's only a good look if you fashion. go to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> if you're holding a wrench, it all changes, I guess. Oh, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> um, but, yeah, thank you so much. That was actually really interesting. Of course.